Right, ladies and gents, here's just um, what I'm going to use as my uh, drain pipe or rain catcher for the side of my tarp. Um, what I've done is cut two strips of material the same length as the tarp. Okay, there's obviously the DPM side, and I've just folded it round here. On one side, which is going to be the free side, there you can see I've just hemmed it. Okay, and there's my hand, that'll give you some idea of a scale. Um, how wide you make this, if you're going to do this to your tops or make a top and do this, is up to yourself. But, you know, it doesn't have to be too fantastic, does it, or too wide. This side I haven't hemmed up, because when this is sewn to the top, I will obviously fold it over and hide the edge which may fray, okay? Um, so, there's that here. And what you'll actually see, uh, I'm not sure I'm going to do it, I want to do it really lightweight, is here I need some loops, so when it's pegged into the ground, this can be then sort of, if you imagine that's sewn to the top, this will need to be held up in the air like that, so it forms almost like a drain pipe. So I'll do that with um, some wooden pegs, no need to carry any extra pegs, and I'm just going to put some sort of lightweight loop here so I can actually attach it to a peg. So the tarp would come down to there, and then this then, the water would run down the tarp, like that, hit this, that would be up in the air, just to catch it there and run it down to the left or to the right to a collection point. But uh, not very, very simple to do. Just a uh, strip of material, hem one side. One side will be sewn to the l length side um, of my tarp. So, uh, yeah, it took me five minutes to do that. Uh, I've done two sides, as you'll see later on. Uh, the only thing that I'm going to do, I want to make them pretty lightweight, is have a way of attaching um, this. It's easier to show you this way. As I just said there, I'm repeating myself. So it comes up in the air like that. So a little loop so I can, you know, force, um, put some sticks in the ground and make it do that. Right, anyway, uh, I'll see you soon, hopefully, with the uh, finished product. Right, ladies and gents, I uh, finally managed to uh, get my addition or the uh, tight wad modification, as I'm calling it, done to me tart. I'll try and point things out to you here. Um, a bit naughty because I shouldn't use my finger. This woody. That's the end of my tarp. So that is the normal end of a tarp, yeah? That's, when I flick it over, I don't like the old uh, metal rings there and that because eventually they pull out. Too much pain to put in and they don't really serve a useful purpose. Some very strong nylon here. That's where I'm going to attach me bungee, me uh, tent pegs and that type of stuff. But just for anybody, it's easy enough to do. I won't even tie it in a knot. A little bit of shock cord there, cause, um, or bungee, whatever you want to call it. So um, once that tarp's done, I will actually hit, hook the tent peg onto this and it will just give that a little bit of um, tension release that, as opposed to ripping at your stitching at the time as again you can see the stitching it's not going to win any design or pretty awards but um, it's pretty pretty um, you know sewed well and I've done it multiple times so if any stitching comes undone it won't affect any of the other stitching because they're all separate stitches or all rows of stitches right anyway there's my hand so you can see how wide it is. I don't actually think it needs to be this wide, but this is the first one anyway. Well, it might be the last one as well. Um, but I've sewed a strip of material that wide all the way down the lengthwise um, of the long side of my tarp. I'll turn it over because some of you may want to do this. There's, uh, a lot of people have been asking me to show what I do. Okay, so as we come down here, this is the normal line of me, me tarp. There's the corner, there's me bit, there's the old uh, webbing loop. Again, again, all sewed in properly. A uh, little bungee bit of shock cord that I have, I mentioned before. But in addition to this, okay, I've obviously hemmed it, hemmed it. it not take long to do on a machine, quite simple to do. Hemmed it so it do not fray, uh, seals the seam. Um, it's put a, a, just a length of that material all the way down one side uh, and on the other side. and. Uh, I'm going for lightweight here because this is just a little bit of um, boot lace that I had here. So at three points down this side, as you'll see, I've sewed that boot lace in so that can be just pulled up and hooked onto, a, you know, a bit of a wooden stake or something. Uh, again, I'll show you why I'm going to do that. And uh, I'm going to say, that's why I sewed this on later on, because I wanted all my um, attachment points or pegging points under this. So when we look, it's just one, well, it's important to sort of get that in. Um, the water's going to come down here and literally drip off, so it's like a roof in itself. If I'd have sewed this bit on top, it would have caught and gone inside rather than flowing straight over. I've got the police uh, helicopter flying over me, so uh, just excuse me for a minute while that goes away. But there's the top, and uh, 
I'm going to uh, stick it up and uh, just let you have a look at it completely deployed, uh, even if temporary in my back garden. Anyway, ladies and gents, that is how it is. One strip of material down one side, or both sides, the long side of my tarp. And I'm going to use that to catch, uh, as you'll see, any water that runs down the tarp. I can direct it to one side or the other, hopefully, um, and then collect that water. Because that water for us can be very, very important. Anyway, uh, let's get this thing up and uh, see what it looks like. I'll see you in a few moments. Alright ladies again, uh, tight wood again here, I've uh, stuck the old basher up, this is the first time, very very temporary, I've uh, got it tight, but not as tight as I would have it if I'm in the field, um, so I just want to prove a concept here, anyway, look, if you're going to make one of these bashers, that's what it looks like in the end, and uh, that's how big it is, forget the little modification I've just done, it's actually too big, so I've just used a couple of bricks that side, which I'm moving them in a moment for a very good reason, uh, here we go, so I'll sort of attach it bungee, can be paracord, nice light ridge line all the way across and I think you can just literally see this, that's a 3 by 3 metre tarp I'm going to say in the region of 25 quid, I, I really do forget how much I pay for the material because I had all of this, 10 metres of this material and 2.5 metres of green Cordura nylon and I think it came to 38 quid so just to sort of give you some sort of prices, um, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about 25 quid top end, well it's got to be 20 quid because I've still got half well, about a third of um, the ripstop nylon left. Excuse my uh, beautiful baby girl who's taken a, a very keen interest in my little handmade sticks or uh, tent pegs. Right, so what I did there, because I've observed it many times, is that water coming down your tarp, hitting the bottom and dropping off, you know, at various points. Booty, get down, get down, thank you very much. Um, you could put a few, uh, you know, mess tin or metal mug under there and try and grab some of it um, but what I wanted to do was just catch as much of it as possible so here's my little idea anyway and as you can see now there is your normal tag line that's where your basher would normally end I've sewn this to it and uh, again I don't expect this to be perfect because this is the first time I've done it um, but yeah um, it needs a few more tie off points I think or I'm going to have to shorten one side of the material just gather it on one side so it's got a natural sort of um, uh, bend in it um, excuse my little booty girl booty, go on, move but yeah, so the idea is the water comes down that basher and it's channelled this way obviously with the height of the sticks um, and I've just used a bit of a boot lace around them it's all in the very embryo stages might change that to um, elastic shock cord as it goes that might be easier to do and uh, just to help here I'm just going to grab this, pinch this and literally sew that together so it, it literally tightens the material so again this is what it's all about putting up for the first time I'm going to have to put some pinch marks in that so the idea water comes down and, and flows off that way uh, I ideally would like more of a slope coming down that way but just for the moment this will do I'm only doing it in my back garden just for the first first time see how we go but if you're doing the old top let's have a look under there you could fit three people and all their kit under that top if you want but the idea being with this is I can have a hammock under there and uh, at no point does a hammock because I see it sometimes I just think ooh, uh, come outside of here the D-ring will be there so any water will drop off hammock coming up there um, and I wanted it sort of that long obviously as it's almost square you could put it the other side if you wanted to do so there is a rain channel the other side just haven't um, bothered set it up this is just a proof of uh, concept but uh, I think you can get the gest general gist of the idea water comes down your tarp and you just feed it down here to a collection point now ideally I'd like a bigger container under there so let's just be thinking about this um, so again, you get a little embryo idea, um, you make a prototype and uh, like everything else in the world, you know, you have a couple of different um, ideas, you trial it and trial it until you get it right. But this is the uh, the embryo way and my idea was there would uh, it could be underneath the basher, that would fill up and you know, you'd fill up from one to the other if that makes sense. Ideally, I would want a bigger receptacle up there so that could just fill up overnight. However not beyond, beyond the realms of possibilities because a tent peg I could use is something like that that would make myself rather than the smaller ones that keep it low to the ground for obvious reasons yeah um, I think that's a very well sort of workable idea anyway um, there is going to be a problem here 
because I know I'm going to get some leakages here I'm probably going to have to take that one off and sew it at the bottom but that's something I knew would happen there's a small little small little gap there so that could go underneath again when you make something for the first time with modifications on it um, you know you learn you, you learn by well your mistakes that makes sense that, that's, that's easy enough to put right but otherwise I think as we look down that form waffling on um, you can see a rain channel that would run down and fill up that receptacle I'd like a bigger one but for the moment that could just be emptied into that one but little proof of concept anyway because um, again uh, when we had them uh, well, we had a terrible winter here in England I'm sure everybody in England remembers that you know gusts and storms and 60 to 100 mile an hour winds and just days and days of rain where the whole country flooded which is you know just the way it goes we don't get a lot of uh, inclement weather um, but I sat here and watched the tarp just have so much water running down it and I thought how do I capture that water and um, what's a, you know, a reasonably effective way of doing it so even if I only come with a couple of pints a day a couple of pints a day, a couple of litres better than um, nothing at all so next time I think what I'm going to do is fill up a watering can go around the other side just tip it over and see where the water goes again I'm not expecting this to be perfect every time because I already know I want more of a slope coming down that way unfortunately my garden is dead flat so uh, without any further ado later on uh, ladies and gents I think we uh, will get some water running down this tarp so I'll see you in a moment all right ladies and gents uh, anyway there's my tarp I've made that um, obviously I hope you that's um, satisfies all the people that have uh, either PM me or asked me how I do it or to show people how they can do it if they've got a simple sewing machine I've added a little modification, a um, little proof of concept here, nothing works first time or perfectly because there's already about two or three ideas I, I'm going to sort of make little um, alterations to the, you know, the, the drain pipe thing to sort of um, keep it more tall but anyway let's just um, have a little go and uh, see what happens only one thing you can do with your kit you've got to be able to test it and this is just a concept if it doesn't work it doesn't work but I had to do it just to see if it was achievable if that makes sense and everything's achievable you've just got to keep working at it It's certainly working, it's collecting the water. I just need to have this side a lot higher than that. Um, I may need to dig the pot in. Just so, you know, you don't, until you do things like this, you're never going to know what's what. So there's a good couple of three litres on there. So I'm going to dismount that and just we'll have a look where the water's going. That's fairly successful down the side. Yeah, that side. Lovely, 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 lovely. Lovely. Until we get to here. That's cool. Unless I see where the water's going, I can't modify it. That pot may have to be dug in. Let's just see. Coming off there. But see that concept, I mean I've got that water there anyway, I just need to be able to channel that into a pot at the end and how I do it. Proof of concept, well, so I've got it to go in there but I need to have this up high. I think the biggest problem I've got at the moment is this thing isn't running downhill properly. But anyway, ladies and gents, 
I have a little tinker with this. Happy with that side. And I think a lot of it is the angling of the stakes. So it's gone down there. All like the problem I had there is uh, it collected there as opposed to going to the bottom. So that's definitely got to be a lot lower. But then I'm guided by the height of the pot. Okay, so maybe I dig a pot in, a hole there for a pot. That's one solution. Or I take that side up a lot higher, so this is naturally a lot lower. But anyway, so I mean, there is a pot of water there. That's the concept. I haven't particularly um, got it right so far, but I think I've proven it will work, given a little bit of tinkering. Again, it's just come all the way down. Again, it collected there, This needs to be pulled up. That needs another staking point. Um, and perhaps a stone or something in there to keep that low. But I'm always going to be guided by the, the height of the pot. So maybe the pot's to be dug in. Don't know. Right, anyway, there's a little first embryo test. And, um, well, to finish on my tarp, I'm going to do some tinkering with this. And if when I get it right, I'll come back and I'll do another demo for anybody that's interested. But, yeah, this will definitely, definitely work. And I think I'm onto something here. But like everything else, just needs to be a um, test, test, and then uh, retest. But at this point, yeah, it came off the top, it never rolled off. I collected the water. All I've got to do now is work out the best way to channel it into a pot. And like I say, yeah, that needs to be the high side, that the low side, but I'm still guided by the height of the pot. Anyway, ladies and gents, um, well, for the moment, that's it. Uh, Barry's coming over tomorrow. Uh, we had a good uh, sort of uh, look around one of our boot fairs today, and I had a few results. But uh, that initially will will work once I've tinkered with it. So uh, I'll see you, lady, ladies, late, um, gentlemen, later on, and uh, probably have this set up in a more realistic environment tomorrow. Anyway, take care.